All right, Raider Nation, what's up? It's your boy, Mikey Raider, coming to you probably at 2 a.m. with my Rich Gannon old school whoopee. What is an old school whoopee? It's just a dirty shirt or blanket that you wear and you use all the time no matter what people think. It probably smells too, but I feel comfortable in it. Now that the, all the, the evil's gone. It's like the Raiders players with our former coach. Please hit that thumbs up, that like, that subscribe button if you guys enjoy my commentary and my content on this channel. Please consider becoming a member of this channel for a few bucks. It helps buy me tacos. It helps keep me positive. It helps keep me housed, if even a little bit. We do have merchandise below. I do have donation centers as well below. Check it out if you feel inclined. What are we going to talk about on today's video? Well, we are going to do a New York Jets Raiders preview from my perspective. Plus, we're going to ask a couple of hard questions. What are those questions going to be? And how hard will they be? Will they be like my penis on Monday morning? That hard? We'll find out. Have you noticed I have a little bit of positive nature to myself? Well, I can see clearly now the rain is gone. I can see all obstacles in my way. That's how Raider Nation is feeling right now. But I don't mean to put a damper on many expectations, but we're going to ask some hard questions and answer them from my perspective in today's video. I also want to know your answers to the hard questions down below. Anything that pops up below me is a good thing. All right, let's get started with the drama, the housekeeping that is continuously continuing now that the evil is gone. People are asking, can Aiden O'Connell play is he better than Jimmy Garoppolo? Does he really give the Raiders a chance to win? There's still a lot of questions in terms of the quarterback position, especially moving forward. But just like Antonio Pierce said, Aiden O'Connell gives them the best chance to win. And I can agree with that, especially with the way Jimmy Garoppolo was playing with the 49ers and with the Raiders, and Glass Joe is just not the best player at this moment. But I posed the question on Twitter. Are you excited that Jimmy Garoppolo is our backup? I'm going to be honest with you guys. I am. He's an overly priced backup, as many of you mentioned on Twitter. But I'm excited that he's our veteran backup that can get the job done. People say, what are you talking about? You saw the way he was playing. Yes, but what I'm speaking about is now that the evil is gone from the building, a lot of players, they feel free and they're starting to play better. They want to play better and they're being able to focus more and maybe rise their abilities that much more. But everybody's discounting Jimmy Garoppolo. He might have the opportunity to be a better Jimmy Garoppolo now that our former coach is gone. He might be better. How much better? You guys can talk, tell the cows come home. And I ain't going home yet. Again, he still doesn't have the deep ball that we all love. And we don't need to talk about that stuff because Aiden O'Connell is our quarterback. But if needed, kind of happy to have Glass Joe as our backup. Now, if he can get rid of any pettiness he has after being benched, if he can get rid of any pettiness that he might have, then he'll be fine. And if we need him in any game, it would be really interesting to see if he could play better now that the evil's gone. 
But the truth is, she probably won't be here next year. We are moving on, generally, so. This is also probably one of his last opportunities, if he gets an opportunity to play in any game, to get on another team for a few more million dollars, while the Raiders still have to probably pay him $11.5 million next year just to get rid of him. But still, I'm excited to have him as our backup, and I saw him celebrating in the locker room, in the videos where they're smoking cigars. Antonio Pierce was giving his speech. Jimmy Garoppolo was cheering him on, and I respect that. He could have been petty, he could have been mad, he could have soaked, like they said Derek Carr did. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But he was celebrating. you got to respect that. Kudos, Jimmy Glass Joe. All right, the next interesting thing came from reporters. They're infighting about stories. We talked a little bit about it on my last show. Reporters are infighting. Some people are saying something is factual, that they heard it from people and players, and other reporters are disputing the fact that, nope, that's not true. Whatever that story is from that reporter, it's not true. Mainly Vic Tafer and Hondo. I'm not saying they have a bad relationship. I'm not saying they're fighting, but they are recruiting each other's reports when it comes to, I don't care. That being said, we want to respect these Raider reporters, but they haven't wanted to be respected because we're getting, for the past year and a half, ever since McDaniels, even before then, but more so with them, oh, I said his name, admonished, I'm admonished, but even more so, we got leaks, and we got a lot of stuff last year from reporters, and now it's all coming to fruition, that a lot of it was lies and agendas to make one person look good over the other, one person look bad over the other. And people were still asking about the um, the leak last week by Jay Glazer, how he found out what our former coach said at the end of the team meeting, where he said, don't you ever talk about the Patriots, where he pulled Antonio Pierce aside and said, don't you ever talk about the Patriots like that. Well, the source hasn't been leaked of who said that. But if you do some obvious deductions, and I'm not accusing this person in a negative fashion of leaking it, but if you look at it as a casual observer and use common sense, the leaker was Antonio Pierce. Why? Because if the story is completely true, and McDaniels did use Antonio Pierce, Pierce to say those words to excite the team before the Lions game, then McDaniels, oh, I said his name again, admonished, admonished, I think I said it twice. If he used Antonio Pierce and then he pulled Pierce to the side and said, don't talk about the Patriots that way, only two people know that story. And one person looks bad in that story. And that person is our former coach. So if only two people know that story and one person is made to look really petty from that story, and that is our former coach, then the only other person that knew it, what had happened, was Antonio Pierce. But Antonio Pierce might have spoke with staff. I don't think he spoke with other players, but he might have spoke with other staff and then they might have leaked it. But in general, the leak started from Antonio Pierce. So, I don't care. It's a good leak. So I'm appreciative of it. Now, let's talk about bad leaks. Now we are finding out the truth that the leaking of information, negative agenda-wise, has been placed officially, and in my opinion, factually, on Dave Ziegler, and our former coach. It is all coming to fruition. Why? Because now, the truth of the matter is, Dave Ziegler, from having a relationship with our former coach, 
He is now a toxic person in terms of getting a job in the future in the NFL at that high of a position. So Dave Ziegler's camp is now leaking information saying that he did not want Jimmy Garoppolo as the Raiders quarterback, that that was all our former coach's decision, and he wanted the Raiders to move up in the draft and draft, draft C.J. Stroud. Dave Ziegler didn't want Garoppolo, didn't want to release Derek Carr. I think that was the story as well. And he wanted to move up in the draft to get C.J. Stroud. All the good moves. Dave Ziegler approved all the good moves. But our former coach said no. So it's all on him. Dave Ziegler is, by nature of being friends with our former coach, has a toxic career aura about him right now. And he's trying to move away from it strategically by these leaks. Now, leaks from our former coach's staff are also coming out to people like, uh, I forgot his name, Michael Lombardi. Michael Lombardi talked bad about Derek Carr and all that in the press. And Doug Kleiman and, and other reporters, I forget their names, they're stool pigeon other people as well that are, were in our former coaches camp. And now they're refuting Ziegler's statement saying that he's the GM and all decisions lie on him. <laughs> so it's a back and forth toxic situation that I love to watch. I love it. No, you made a mistake. No, you made a mistake. Shut up. I, I know for a fact you made a mistake. I'm going to tell the reporters the truth. I'm going to refute your truth because it's not the truth. This is the truth. I love it. I love it. But it's sad to see that players, former players and stuff like that are caught in the crossfires of all these ridiculous leaks. Now we are knowing who's doing it officially. Michael Lombardi just spoke about that the, the reason the Raiders are losing is not because of our former coach. It's because of the players. That's right. He called out all the players and all the mistakes they make. And again, trying to make our former coach look a little bit better than normal. And that's the Michael Lombardi camp with our former coaches camp. That's why our offensive coordinator was also fired because Mark Davis realized that these leaks were really happening by these duos and Mark put it all together and he made a good decision. We're done with that situation. Now, Antonio Pierce had another quote of the day today that I really love. He said, I like organized chaos. He said, I like it. I like chaos. Organized. <laughs> All right. I hope that don't come to back to bite you in the butt. I don't think it will. I'm on a positive note. But also, people are now comparing Antonio Pierce to the Mike Singletary situation that happened many years ago as a player's coach and excitement. When Mike Singletary became the 49ers coach in an interim fashion at that moment, he might not officially been an interim. He might have just been brought in as the head coach. But if they're comparing, he was probably an interim. I should have did my research. Forgive me. It's an impromptu video. But I did read that they're comparing the Antonio Pierce situation to Mike Singletary, where he lost the team after a few weeks. And they're also asking the question, can this be sustainable? Well, my answer to that is Antonio Pierce is not Mike Singletary. Mike Singletary was from the former, the previous decade or so before he became a coach. Antonio Pierce is kind of in that newer decade. He wears earrings in a press conference. He's sort of like a 2000 person, like a late 90s, 2000 dude. 
And those type of people, in my opinion, are intelligent and smart and know what's going on with the world and they understand culture. I'm not saying that might be people like me, but Mike Singletary is from that 70s, 80s, old school vibe that our former coach tried to install. Antonio Pierce is like halfway. He's like, we gotta be disciplined halfway. And you know what? UMFers have to have some fun too. Let's get it done. Like he said, let's all meet at the quarterback. Let's do our job, meet at the quarterback, and then have an effing party. <laughs> also, Devontae Adams in a quick press conference said that we're not always gonna, we're not gonna fire up cigars after every victory. He goes, Raider players knew why they needed to do that, and that's why they did it, and that's why it was deserved. Because a lot of people are mocking the Raiders for acting like they won the Super Bowl and all that. And Devontae Adams spoke to that. He said, you all don't know what we've been through the past two years to where we deserved it, we needed it, and it's us. It's our locker room, and that's it. That's for us. And kudos on Max Crosby for also buying them the night before, showing that much faith and pride in his team and he wanted to create a moment that was heard around the world. These Raiders feel different. And I'm not saying they're going to win the Super Bowl. I'm not saying they're going to make the playoffs. But you're damn right that Raider spirit is coming back from the grave. That rebel Raider spirit of saying and doing things and then also coming out and fighting your tail off to get a victory and not giving a damn who cares and what is said and what matters. In today's world, a lot of NFL teams try to silence their players and their coaches, and that's what our former coach tried to do. Now our players are free, but they still need to do their job, and we got better leadership. These Raiders feel different. So at the end of the day, I'm very proud of everything that happened with all the pain and the turmoil. I mean, do I miss players like Carr? Yes, I do. As a friend, as a fan, I wish him the best. Um, I wish he could be a part of this for, for more good times for him since he really wanted to be a Raider for his life until we all know what happened. But these Raiders feel different, and I'm proud of everything that happened to get to this point. So, can't look back. We cannot wish it never happened because we might not have had this feeling, and this might be the catalyst and the setting off point and the tipping point for our foundation. I've said it in other videos. There's a seed grown after the death. There's a seed now that has been planted. Wherever the players take it and the coaching staff takes it, we don't know. But they at least have an opportunity to grow now. And grow in a friendly family environment for the most part. So I'm happy. All right, let's get into the Jets preview, man. This is, in my opinion, another trap game. What do you mean it's a trap game? I just mean that people are counting out the Jets. They're still counting out the Raiders, but they're also counting out the Jets. Oh, because Zach Wilson sucks and, you know, he barely completes any passes. I don't care. He could have a good game. He could. One out of every ten he might have. The Raiders have been the get-right game for many struggling quarterbacks or young quarterbacks or who quarterbacks who the Raiders have been the get right game I don't think that's the path but still it is in our legacy and in our lore so we cannot discount that plus it's on Sunday night football in front of the world the whole world is watching after our celebrations and our victory last week and our enjoyment and one other quick note I forgot to mention, Robert Spillane is a badass. 
He broke his hand during the Lions game on Monday Night Football. And he had surgery. He still stayed in the game, had surgery. They put him in a cast for last week's game, and he's still playing like a baller. He's not sitting out being a crybaby. He's being the old school Raider mentality. I mean, and I saw an interview today. That dude got a big ass neck. They, he got a big ass neck, and he beat, beat like this. I don't care. It ain't no. Shut up. We gonna play the ball. Yeah, it didn't hurt that much. I've had worse pain. What type of pain have you had that's worse? I'm not going to speak about it. <laughs> Interesting characters on this Raider roster. Like the characters from the 70s and 80s and 90s for the Raiders. That's why I love the feeling. Now, getting back to the Jets. Their defense is one of the best. If not, they could be the best if it wasn't for their offensive woes. We have a whoops, whoopsie. We have a rookie quarterback. Let's see if I can set it again, guys. Whoopsie. We have a rookie quarterback, and you know the Jets are going to come after him. I'm not saying he's struggling, but he's still learning the game. And the Jets and Robert Shala are going to throw the book at him. They are going to blitz him a lot. He's going to see things he has not ever seen at the college level, even in the NFL, in his first two starts. So, that's really, really interesting to me. That is going to be a battle. If the offensive line can maintain at least 70% of what they did last week against uh, the New York Giants, he'll be okay. But... He's going to have some issues in the game. Okay? So expect that. But expect a run game as well. But they defend the run a lot. Again, with a rookie quarterback, you have to have the run game on point. And that's what they did last week. But Josh Jacobs is going to struggle a little bit more this week. And a little bit more pressure is going to be put on Aiden O'Connell. So it's up to Bo Hardegrave, the, the new offensive coordinator, to put in place for Aiden O'Connell to get rid of the ball as quick as possible. So don't pick those former coaches' plays where it's third and two or third and three and then have wide receivers and tight ends run 12 yards out. You can't do that. I expect more screenplays, and I hope for a few more RPOs. Not an RPO. I forgot what they call it. Uh, where they fake the handoff because the run game is working. Um, play action. Play action. There you go. I expect a few more play action passes this week than last week. And I expect Trey Tucker to be a decent part of the game plan. Him and Hunter Renfro. Those are the guys that right there in the middle of the field can get open real quickly and be a good outlet, as well as Josh Jacobs. Also, use Michael Mayer for these quick throws and these quick outlets. Take what the defense gives you, Aiden. Take what the defense gives you. And they might only give you three yards every time. But if you do three yards every time, even on fourth down, then you got, what, 12 yards? You're at least going to get 10. So, it's going to be a hard game on offense. And um, now let's talk about our defense. Our defense has the opportunity of another get-right game. Pull out some stops. Uh, our defensive linemen need to stop the run, though. We struggle in stopping the run. We gave up to a team that basically had no quarterback last week. Knowing they were going to run the ball with Saquon, we still gave up 100 yards. Uh, they got to do better. And that's what the Jets excel in as well. They got a big offensive line. They got a good young looking running, running back or two. And I don't want this to be a get right game for their run game. You heard? So the Raiders need to stop the run. 
But I also want the Raiders defense like Amik Robinson, uh, Marcus Peters, if he plays. I, I think he's a little bit injured right now, banged up. Marcus Epps. I want him to continue to take chances, especially against Zach Wilson. Last week, Amik Robertson took a chance, and it didn't pan out. But he bounced back, and he got some big plays and big interceptions. And you know what? I was mad at him at first for taking that chance. But you know what? If that inspires him, take those chances. But do them strategically. Second down, you know, third down in 20, <laughs> third and 14. <laughs> <laughs> you know, take, I mean, sorry, not on third and 14. <laughs> Don't take those chances. But if it's like third down and seven, and they're trying to get a first down, maybe try to get an interception. And just in case you miss the block, or you don't tackle him, or you miss the interception, make sure on that game call, you have a safety in the area, you know, to, to stop him. But you don't want to do that like on third and 14, in the red zone or them driving you don't want to do it then you want to do it in the middle of the field you know or when it's close to the opposite end zone whatever i'm not a game strategist show but i expect our defense to have a good game in fantasy football if you need a, a defense i think you could stream the raiders defense uh, i think they're going to do a good enough job so in summary, this could be a trap game with the former Raiders. But if we put together as much feeling and passion and energy and excitement into playing as good a ball as we can against this team, we're going to be in it the whole way. And we should be leading the whole way. It still might be a close game because if Zach Wilson is coached up pretty good and he's if he wakes up feeling dangerous some quarterback said that i woke up feeling dangerous was that mayfield yeah i think it was mayfield <laughs> but zach wilson can can make some plays um this is going to be a closer game than people think it might be a off not an offensively driven game it's going to be more defensively driven, but that's okay. As long as we outscore them. I mean, I learned this from our former coach. If we score more points than the other team, we're going to win games. <laughs> oh, Wi-Fi Willie, I want to give him credit. He made a video of all the issues and allegations on our former coach. It was a great watch. We lived through it all. So it's a fun watch, but it makes me angry. I literally wanted to turn it off. Not because he was doing a bad job, Willie, in editing. Because I was reliving every moment and every piece of anger I had. So it's a hard watch. But it's a good watch. Um, <laughs> so credit to Wi-Fi Willie. But somebody needs to make a video on our former coach and all his quips or, or statements. You know what, I think Willie might have did like something to that effect in those videos, but still, it's pretty hilarious. I also want to give credit to Murph. I miss you, Murph. I love you guys. You guys are doing big things. You guys hung out with the Fred Belitnikoff Foundation charity, gave them $15,000 for their charities, and with the One, uh, One Nation Foundation, and I just want to applaud you. And there's a lot of Raider YouTubers and video makers that are getting exclusive with players and, and people of high caliber. And I just want to say congratulations. Um, you guys are putting in the work and you deserve all the accolades. I am never ever going to be jealous when you come from a good hearted place. And you're not trying to create drama in the YouTube community. I will never be jealous to people like that. I will be inspired. And you all inspire me. And I love you. That being said, let me give you my final score predictions. Well, the final score will be, and I we are going to struggle offensively against their good defense. But we're still going to score more than 19 points under our former coach's offense. 
That's right, against a very good Jets defense. We are going to score 21 points, if not 20, and we are going to beat the Jets 20 to 14. It might be 20 to 17 if they have a good week. That being said, I expect it to be a victory, but it could also be a trap game. But that would be for the former Raiders. And I'm hoping for chaos that's organized, Antonio Pierce. Let me know your final score predictions, Raider Nation. Let me know your MVPs from the game. I do believe Devontae Adams will catch more than seven balls this week. And I'm hoping it's for over 100. Even if it's seven, seven for 70 or something of that matter, because he has to bring the passes closer to the line, you know, to get out the ball quickly, that's okay. And, but I can guarantee a Devontae Adams touchdown. I'm going to guarantee it this week. But I expect big things from Hunter Renfro, Trey Tucker, and again, I'm not saying a 400-yard game, a 300-yard game for Aiden O'Connell. I'm expecting maybe 220, 230 yards this week. Because last week he had like 210. So if he does 230 and a touchdown at least, he might throw an interception. But still, that would be a really good improvement against a vaunted Jets team. And I'm excited for it. I can throw out there might be a Jacobs touchdown as well. But still. It's going to be a fun game. Sunday night football, baby. I'm going to go live on my channel. So if you choose to hang out with me on Sunday night football and watch our Raiders, I appreciate you and I feel very respected. If you choose to hang out with me and entertain ourselves while we're watching our Raiders on Sunday night football. So come to this channel. Check us out. If you feel like supporting me, super chatting, I don't know if I'm going to have alcohol or beers or food i don't know what i'm gonna do depends on my health and how i'm feeling but we're gonna have a good time we're gonna celebrate our raiders in a positive fashion and we're gonna have a good time and we're not gonna critique every decision they make why because we're a little bit more happy clap along if you feel like the raiders are back again because we're happy I love you, Raider Nation. Stay healthy, stay happy, stay blessed. Let me know your thoughts on everything we talked about in today's show. And hit that like button, that subscribe. Consider becoming a member. And more importantly, have a blessed day. I'll see you Sunday night.